Zimbabwe cricket, quite possibly the most controversial and interesting cricketing nations to ever play the great game. Now last year in July, the ICC suspended the nation's cricketing team from test matches and ICC events due to the government interference in their cricketing affairs. The second time it's happened in their history. That's right, the second time. Now, no man was more disappointed than the legend that is Brendan Taylor. The former Zimbabwean captain who averages linger in the 30s across tests and ODIs took to Twitter with the dismay of the announcement, saying that cricketing bodies need to stand up and help the ICC chairman. Now that the suspension has been lifted and Zimbabwe are back playing all forms of cricket again, is there a resurgence? Well, obviously not because we're currently in a global pandemic. But after the global pandemic, hopefully there might be a resurgence. Well, we'll look at that potential resurgence later. For now, here's all the facts and details on cricket's most interesting and polarising country, Zimbabwe, with a bit of a shout out to Brendan Taylor included. Now to really understand Zimbabwe cricket, we have to deep dive back to the beginning of their roots. The country is formerly known as Rhodesia, and they participated in the South African Curry Cup until formal independence in 1980 from the British Empire, and then became a member of the ICC in mid-1981. From there, it was a slow, rocky, but quite brilliant road at points. Zimbabwe attended the 1983 World Cup, winning just once an emphatic win against the Aussies, but bowed out with five losses as well. Not a bad start considering all else, especially rolling over the Aussies. The 1987 World Cup ended worse, with the team losing seven games, followed by 1992 winning just once out of eight. But that World Cup provided a win against another powerhouse, that of England. After defending a dismal 134 all out, they took to the field and they defended it which provided some much useful confidence going forward. In 1992, Zimbabwe were given the ninth international cricket spot in test matches. It took 11 matches until they registered their first win, which came at the expense of Pakistan. From 92 through to 97, there was some steady progress. However, once 97 came around, it looked like Zimbabwe was set to really announce themselves onto the world stage. With the prospects of Andy and Grant Flower, yes brothers, as well as the likes of Heath Streak and Murray Goodwin, they were set to really, really take it on. In 1998, again at Pakistan expense, Zimbabwe won the three test series 1-0 and even beat India in a one-off test. By the end of 98, Zimbabwe were no joke going into the World Cup year of 1999. They backed up a strong 98 with a fifth place finish at the Cricket World Cup. During the promise and flourishing years of 97 through to 02, Zimbabwe had beaten all test-playing nations bar Australia and had even beat New Zealand in a two-test series. These years went down in the history books for Zimbabwe cricket. However, such an amazing rise followed racial tension that had kicked off in the country and that the government had tried to take control of Zimbabwe cricket by the beginning of 2003. Now, here's where the real downfall happens. In 2003, the World Cup was supposed to be hosted by Zimbabwe along with South Africa. This was supposed to be the chance where Zimbabwe was to show themselves to the world as a cricketing power. Instead, England refused to tour, and Andy Flower and Henry Olger, one of the two most prominent members in the Zimbabwe cricket team, protested against the government by wearing black armbands against the growing political intervention and the so-called death of democracy that was occurring within Zimbabwe. This led to their ultimate expulsion from Zimbabwe cricket. After the disaster of 03 and 04, it didn't turn out much better, with Streak stripped of his captaincy by the ZCU, to which 14 other players responded by protesting and walking out. This resulted, ultimately, in Zimbabwe losing their test status for the very first time. Within the space of two years, Zimbabwe had gone from impressing the world with its rise to becoming a place no one wanted to tour. After a worsening political climate, salaries were not being paid, and the Logan Cup was suspended, which was Zimbabwe's domestic competition and really the lifeblood of Zimbabwe cricket. This caused, by 2006, Zimbabwe to plummet. Now, we've looked at 02 to 06. Now we're going to shift our focus, 2006 to 2011. This is where Zimbabwe struggled to pay players and even lost to Ireland in a 2007 World Cup campaign. This really underlined the issues that Zimbabwe had. However, on the 4th of August 2011, Zimbabwe cricket returned from the gloom to once again playing test cricket. 
they signed a $1 million deal with Reebok to sponsor the domestic competition as well as to sponsor the national team. 2011 was also a big year, as this is when our mate Brendan Taylor was announced as captain of all formats of Zimbabwean cricket, to which a return to test matches was led by Brendan himself and a 131 win against Bangladesh in Harare. Their success continued with a first series win against a test-playing nation since 2006 in the form of Bangladesh, winning that series 3-2, which was very, very impressive. While New Zealand also toured, showing signs that things could be improving, especially after an emphatic win chasing down 328 in an ODI, especially after bouncing back after a 2-0 series defeat in a T20 series. They also continued with their impressive wins here and there, while also losing emphatically to the lights of Bangladesh, while our mate Brendan Taylor retired after an impressive 2015 World Cup campaign, to then only return again in 2017. Following the common trend that Zimbabwe cricket seems to follow, their short-lived return followed yet another slump. In March 2018, Zimbabwe hosted the World Cup qualifiers. However, after just needing to beat the UAE, they lost by three runs, making it the first time in their history they had ever failed to qualify for a World Cup. Because of the failure, staff were sacked and a change in captaincy occurred, meaning our mate, Brendan Taylor returned to take over the lead at super position for the time being. Things got bad to worse for Zimbabwe, as Pakistan and Australia were touring in a tri-series. Raumay Brendan and others refused to play as they had not been paid in almost a year. By the end of 2018, they were on such a bad note with the team losing 19 matches in a row. While in early 2019, Tours to India and Afghanistan were cancelled. With the progression of 2019, we saw that Zimbabwe cricket had once again been suspended by the ICC. Now, this didn't really come as a surprise to anybody, due to further political interventions in the cricketing affairs, and so last year in July, it seemed like the only logical step for the ICC to make. Our mate, Brendan Taylor, wasn't too happy about that, hence the tweets that I showed earlier. In October of last year, however, the ICC allowed Zimbabwe to return to test matches and future ICC events, and they returned to test matches against Sri Lanka, losing that series 1-0. Now, all things considered, Zimbabwe cricket has a fascinating role in world cricket, and its start of its rise was truly extraordinary, all the way through from 97 to 02, seeing like Zimbabwe could be a new powerhouse in cricket. However, with its combined political interventions and its social disorder, Zimbabwe cricket has never really been the same. Now, I feel bad for my mate Brendan Taylor, as not only has he been a star and almost a symbol for Zimbabwean cricket, but he's just a bit of a legend. Now, if you've enjoyed, please do leave a like and click that subscribe button down below. It really would mean a lot. This channel is just getting kicked off and I've got some really big, big plans for it. Um, deep diving into the whole world of cricket, whether that be stories from teams or players. Um, I've got a vast number of ideas. If you've got any suggestions on some ideas you want me to do or some ways to improve, please leave some constructive criticism down below. And um, share the video around if you've enjoyed it. And um, see you next time.